You know, I got to say this though, man, at the end of the day, man, what moved me, what moved me today, man, for this event, man, is see, you know, I always call, me and my brother, Nasser Tahuti, man, I always say the black woman is God, man. Right. And the atmosphere was not, was not what I, 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 I expected it to be. And then a sister came up there, man. I mean, I, you know, the sister came up there, man, and changed the whole atmosphere. <laughs> What's uh, your name? The General. I am a sick man. I was back Harriet Tubman up. I would have been one of the conductors on the underground. Oh, yeah. All right, when you got away from the plantation, if you look like you wanted to go back to the white man, they say Harriet would pull a pistol out on you. I would have had two pistols. I would have pulled both of them and cut them on your mouth all oh, day, Bubba. You ain't going back to the white man. You either going to be free or we going to free you right here, Big Bubba. You ain't going All right, she said the general man, please, please, you know what I'm saying, give the people uh, some a taste of what you gave them earlier, sister. <laughs> you want to give it something like this? I'll do it on the street. Don't make me act up out here. Huh? Don't make me act up right now. Huh? I think that the uh, the energy of what I want to bring forth, no matter what it is, again, once again, I am, I am for Sekhmet. And the energy that I want to bring forth to this time and this place on August 13th at the Alhambra Ballroom at the HOK reunion is a truce time. It's time for us to understand that we may believe in different things and we may have different ideologies, but we do have the same enemy, regardless of what we call ourselves. And this is the time for us to come together and understand that we have to begin to pool our resources together so we can become free. And that's not just physically free. We're talking about mentally free, emotionally free, spiritually free. Uh, black folks are a resilient people, but we also are people of special needs. We fucked up. You feel me? We ready to snap. We ready to snap at any time. We ready to go off. We're not willing to give each other the benefit of the doubt. Meanwhile, we're giving every other race the benefit of the doubt. We're giving every other race a pass. But we don't want to give our brother and our sister a pass if we may not subscribe to the same ideology. Those times are dead. In 2018, it's time to get a team, and our team is the family. And the family is, if you black in the wilderness of North America, if you're a displaced African, knowing that you're a descendant from kidnapped Africans, then it's time for us to band together and realize that we have to come together for us to be able to fight. We don't have enough guns to defeat them alone. We don't have enough resources to, to defeat them alone. We're going to them for our natural resources, our food, our clothing, our shelter, our water. But in still, we call them our mortal enemy because they are. So those are the things that I want to, uh, to say for this day. It's time for us to begin to get our own natural resources so we can be off of this crack of motherfucking bastard's titty. It's time for us to understand that it's time for us to grow our own food, make our own clothes, business with each other, educate our own children, police our own selves. It's time for us to realize that we have a way of life. We have a name, we have a culture, and even though it has been stolen from us, we can find it now. We've been educated, our eyes have been opened. There's places like Baba TV, Every Time Fire, Sinetta TV, The HOK, and so many other platforms that I could name that bring right information to us that have waken up so many blacks. So this is the time for us to come together. Let me, let me ask you a question, sister, man, you know, being that you're saying that. Um, why some of these brothers who have information or have knowledge itself have a hard time respecting the black woman? Having a hard time giving the black woman her due? You know, um, I want to say that I believe that the black man has got a bad rap. You know, everyone talks about the deadbeat black man, the deadbeat black father, or the no good black man, but nobody's ever talking about no good black women choices. Uh, uh, so I, I think that the black man is really getting a bad rap. I think that there's a lot of black men that are stepping up, 
There's a lot of black men that are coming forth and saying, look, I know my rightful position. I understand that the chips are stacked against me and I've been put in a position that has not looked uh, uh, very good. But there's too many black men out here right now that are willing to take that step. But we as women have been generationally heads of household for so long, we don't know how to let the black man take his place. We've, we've got this uh, uh, think like a man uh, uh, syndrome going on. We got this I don't need a man, this independence. Um, and I'm not saying not to be independent, but to think that that would remove the black man from the equation is the same thing the cracker did to us, isn't it? So I understand that there's a lot of black men out here, but we have to give them we have to give them the opportunity to step up. It's a lot of black women that haven't given the black man the opportunity to become a better man, and, and I think that that's what needs to happen. All right, well, young sister, what do you think about this? Same question to you. What do you? I mean, what, what she said. Do you feel the same way she does? I would have to agree. Peace, everybody. I would agree with her. Black men do get a bad rep. Um, I feel like there are more black women than there are more uh, black men. So the good ones do get drowned in the negativity. When you talk about uh, deadbeats, that's like a thing that everyone always bring that up. Uh, when they can be highlighting the men that are doing things that are positive in the community. Like, every time I have a conversation, um, people always like, oh, black men this, black men. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I'm around a lot of positive black men. I do know some deadbeats, but I know a lot of positive black men. I'm around them, so that's what I see. That's what I identify with. So when someone come to me talking about that's foreign to me. It's, it's becoming more and more foreign to me because I'm around positive black men a lot. So I'm around you guys right now. You guys are in these streets, you know. I'm not, I don't see those guys that they talking about black men this, black men that. Like, no, we got to start perpetuating in our minds that our men are good men. And that will become reality. You feel me? So. All right. Well, at the end of the day, Sister Ken, can a Muslim get along with a Christian? Can a, a Christian get along with a Buddha? Can Buddha get along with Hindu? I mean, you're saying unify. Can it happen? Of course it can happen. If we've done it before. As we speak on this day, August 13th, and we're talking about our, our, our great ancestor Marcus Garvey, who was a Christian. He wasn't only a Christian, he was a Catholic. There was, there was so many different uh, 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 belief systems underneath that flag. So it can happen. If we look, we look at the blueprint that was laid before us, but it's time to revamp it. It's time for us to revamp that blueprint. So I do believe that a Muslim and a Christian and a Moor and a Hebrew can get together to defeat a common enemy. Yes, I do. I, I don't think that that's something that should be hard to do. I think that that's something that we need to understand we must do. And if we understand we must do it, the same way that the resiliency of black people have done so many things that we must do, even though we didn't want to do it. We, we, we learned how to speak this bastard language. We didn't want to do that. We learned how to serpentine through this system and still survive. And we didn't want to do that. So we're capable of doing things that we don't want to do to achieve a goal. And that's what I think needs to happen now. Sankofa, this gives us a little touch on that, man. Give us your insight, man, on what that black man is not doing or what he's doing or what's going on with this black man in America. Um, we got to understand... The black man that we talk about, we're talking about the man, but we ought to talk about the condition that made the man or broke the man or that se uh, uh, separated the man from the family structure. Now, we talk about the black man. This is a new phenomenon. Black man has always had struggles here in America. We were brought here not even considered men. The black woman was called bitch back then or wench. These are names that we still call ourselves. But getting to the point of the man, there was a time when between the ages of 15 and 25, Right? You was used as a breeder, especially if you was a certain um, um, physical type of a black man or a man dingo. A pedigree. You know what I'm saying? So you was a stud. Yeah. That was the term on the plantation. You was a stud. You was a buck. Terms we still use to this day. So you got to understand that this was embedded in our psyche, but the, the black family structure out of a bottomless vitality. Huh? After the post-antebellum um, period, you seen more black men inventors, right? Um, physicians, that's right, Martin Delaney, you know what I'm saying? And many others, uh, um, 
David Walker, you know what I mean? Many other great black men, unsung heroes and sheroes, all right? We built institutions, we invented things, you know what I'm saying? We showed uh, and, 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 and that even that we were conditioned, even though that we were broken down and that we were separated, and this is about a couple of centuries after, right? This is a couple of centuries after that when, after the Unplessy and Ferguson Act, right, of the late 1800s, we see more black men being better fathers, being married longer, and being better in productive society, doing things in society, being productive and constructive men, and raising up other ones, right? But it wasn't until we did this after the Homestead Act, after the FHA in 1930, Federal Housing Association gave white people a stimulus package, and the white Europeans came here, started to raise up and into the suburbs, and we was in the, what was called the ghettos coming from the south. We still had strong black manhood dealing with that. What happened is what we have to ask. When did it happen? Why did it happen? And why does it persist? These are the social scientific uh, dynamics that we have to look at. And now I study sociology from a black pan-Africanist perspective, not from the white Europeans consensus or perspective, just to get an understanding, an understanding, and an overstanding of what we ought to do, what happened. Because if you don't understand what happened, you won't understand what's happening. Right? Sure. And if you understand, it wasn't until after 1968, okay, because it was that night, that point, 80%, 85% of the households in a black community had two parents there. Black men were employed. They were in the trade. They were in jobs. This is after all the conditioning. This is after the so-called Willie Lynch, whether you believe it was real or not. The symptoms were. But what happened after all that conditioning where we still had a family structure and men were still in the homes? It wasn't after they socialized us into where we're at now. The psychological damage that was done to us didn't break us down the way that the sociological damages that we're dealing with are now. And having a, a counterbalance on our psychology. You know what I'm saying? The effeminization of the black man was a seed that was planted in our community in the 1960s. They already predicted this. You know what I'm saying? The black on black crime and, and, and homicidal fratricide that you see was predicted. They see they didn't do enough. In, in captivity in the antebellum period, in the post-antebellum period. They socialized us by taking the man out of the house. They said, well, damn, after all we did to these niggas, they're still being inventors, fathers, workers, employees, and then being strong men? What? Being a part of organization, we have a lot of greatness that happened even after slavery, but it wasn't until after 1968, right, that you started to see the decline. When, um, who was the president back then? Richard Nixon, war on drugs, <clears throat> war on blacks. Right. Political code talk, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the welfare state, because white women was the first ones on welfare, it was given to them. They were in the project first, you know what I'm saying? True. After yeah. World War II, they, they were poor and disenfranchised. Yeah. Then they put us there, right? Yeah. They took the black men out the house. In order to have welfare, the man had to say farewell. You know what I'm saying? So when you look at these different dynamics and how they said, well, damn, after all we did to the black man psychologically, he's still in the household, and damn, they're still making strides. If we don't offset this, because these are social engineers, this war that we're in is social, political, economic, spiritual, it's all those things. But we have to look at the sociological dynamics and how we factor into that. So we got to understand, because we were broke down from that, we have to, we have to be re-socialized, and that has to be getting back in tune with our African-centeredness. Right. So let me say this. At the end of the day, we have confusion in the, in, 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 the, in the black society. People are uh, undecided about what they want to do with this gay stuff going on. Now, I mean, I, I, you know, I, I got to change the topic, man, you know what I'm saying? I need some insight on what's going on with a woman trying to be a man and a man trying to be a woman. I don't have any personal knowledge on that. Hmm? Uh, I, uh, I I enjoy being a black woman. It's something that I would never want to be anything else. Um, I, I I think that it, it, in this time, it's definitely a programming, right? It's something that has been inducted into our uh, into our systems and our way of life for a reason. We understand what those reasons are, right? We don't have to keep doing that. I'm not about to go bedroom checking though either. I'm not running. I'm not running to nobody's window or, and peeping through nobody's blinds to find out what nobody's doing in their bedroom because even the ones that we consider uh, not homosexual are doing some foul shit in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. You feel me? My, it, it, it's brothers out here want to get pissed on and shitted on. Pardon me. Yeah? Uh, 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 and they don't nobody want to talk about that. 
but then they want to start pointing their fingers at uh, homosexuals. We understand that the, the homosexual uh, uh, plight is a, a system uh, against us to keep us in a place where we don't know where we are. But that's always been the, 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 the idea of this, this beast, is to keep us confused. That's just another way of keeping us confused. It's just another way of keeping us not creating, not procreating. Another way, we are being annihilated on so many levels and homosexuality is one of those levels. But am I going to be the, the, the sister that's running around bed checking? Nah, I'm cool on that. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather know who you are so we can move on and, and, and deal with the people that are ready to do some real things. But to touch on the welfare system, uh, I think that that's also another thing that we as black women need to understand it's very hard in the spirits of our black men to want to be we, they want to be protectors and providers black men want to be protectors and providers but when, when when shit get tough we turn and we run to the to this this white man to get food we turn and run to the white man to get our section 8 or to get our welfare and I'm not knocking nobody that get that if you get it get that but you have to understand what that black man in your life feels like when he's incapable of bringing food to the table and you could just run to the white man for it. You got to understand what kind of energy that brings into your household. Sometimes we might have to go through the struggle together to be stronger with one another instead of resorting to the safety net of our mortal enemy. And the reason, even, the reason why welfare even started was for white women whose men went off to war. Right? So when their men went off to war, the government wanted to make sure that the wife and the children were fed. What this cracker do? He flipped it. When the white man came back from war and more black women started getting on it, they used that as a way to keep the black man at the household. It's the same old story. When we got off the ships, that's the first thing they did. Separate your man from your woman and your child from your mother. You see what I'm saying? It's an it's a, it's a old system. This is not a new game we playing. This is an old game that they keep revamping, but we won't revamp our shit. We won't revamp our game. We want to stay stagnant. We, we, we need to be like living water. We need to understand that there's, there's ways that we can serpentine through this wilderness of North America without having to deal with this beast. There's, there's ways we can do it, but you have to be able to have a mind that's open enough to realize there's people out here talking and singing a different song. We're not singing We Shall Overcome anymore someday. I'm not singing Amazing Grace no more where they're calling me a wretch. I got to be a wretch? No. I, I, I'm royal. I came from a royal line. I came from a royal lineage. And that's where I want to live for that. So I think that our sisters need to learn me included need to learn how to let our black man take his rightful place and sometimes putting someone the, let me say this everything that I've learned about myself I've learned about myself when I lost not when I won all right when I lost let me say this let me say this all right um, I'm writing a book on the black family it should be it should be out uh, the middle of this month the end of, the, the, the end of August um, because I understand the very foundation to life in black people is their family. You know what I'm saying? If the family is in disarray, if the, if the family is not organized, where a man know what he's supposed to do, woman know what he, uh, she's supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? Each individual has their plan on how to run this family. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, listen to me, sister. If a woman has not been taught what a woman is, and a man has not been taught what a man is, it's impossible for them to get proper instruction. I agree. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. I agree. You know what I'm saying? But now the blinds have been blurred. See? It's women out here that don't want to say that there's a woman's place and there's a man's place. There's, there's men and women out here that don't want to say that there's man roles and there's women roles. And I believe that there are women's roles and there are man's roles. And I think that we need to understand that and once we're able to walk in that and understanding, okay, this is my place and this is my lane it, you know just like you on a highway right you on a highway there's a slow lane there's a lane in the middle and there's a fast lane everybody take a lane when do the problems come when a motherfucker want to swerve in the, the wrong lane doing some other shit you see what I'm saying so when you doing 40 and you trying to get over here in the lane when they doing 70 it's gonna be a problem right but you think you're doing safe doing 40 you see what I'm saying? But listen, sister, ho, ho. For us to 
learn but let me say place. but let me say something to you sister it has to be a certain man in, in order for it has to be a certain mentality to handle you if he had, no 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 I'm gonna say this no well I, well I understand that but I'm saying this at the end of the day I don't want anybody turning me into anything I wouldn't be already that you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Right. You tap into it. I saw a set. I saw a set. I saw a set. Well, our ancestors wrote that story for a reason. We know it was symbolic, but it was had truth value to it that still resonates right now. She is a saw. She is an ascent to many dead Asas who are chopped up or divided black men, separated, right? And then brought them back together. That queen that loved them went and brought him back together, right? And then, that's the, with the mythological sense, but I look at the, the meat and potatoes of the story as this. It took that woman to raise that daughter. If the, the black woman, who is the first teacher of the child, the mother of civilization, got the mitochondria DNA, all right? When she's raised up to her right place and we're balanced, uh, everything sociologically, politically, economically, spiritually, and everything that we're offset on. Because remember, the making of the nigger didn't take place in 40 years, 30 years, it took place over time. But we don't have to take that back long to wait back up. Once the queen get back right, she can get the man right back in his order. We're God. Do, oh, now, do my experience. I see some good women try to wake men up and couldn't wake them up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, they no they, they wasn't woke. They was that's, dead. That's the, see, that's the problem. Now, you, you, you got to think of the model uh, that you're talking about. All right, but now, 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 all right, all right. You see but, but, hold, now, now we're getting deep here. Now, this is why I'm saying what I'm saying, sister. I'm in the street. I'm teaching the uncivilized to be civilized. That's right. See, because at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, people can come to these lecture halls all day long, but the warfare is in the street. The warfare is in them projects. The warfare is dealing with these individuals within these gangs. And you know what I'm saying? In these crazy ass houses where the man is beating up on the woman, abusing the child. You know what I'm saying? This is where the warfare is. So if we're going to go hard, we got to go hard in, in these type of environments, man, dealing with these type of people. Because at the end of the day, we can say whatever we want to say in here with these people that already got some information. But the people that, the people that need us, we got to go. Where they at? At the end of the day, sister. That's right. We got to meet people where we at. We got to meet people where they are. And, and, and we have to understand that there is a rightful place for all of us. And I believe that if our women begin to understand that if we begin to take our rightful place and rebuild the foundation, that is going to be the upliftment, the motivation, and the encouragement of the black family. It does start with us. It does start with us. And I want to say, black man, I love you. And your situation will never trump your purpose. Your situation will never trump your purpose, no matter what. It's lies. It's all lies. Whatever somebody told you, whatever your mother told you when you was a kid, you look like your daddy, you ain't shit. Whatever your woman told you, oh, you can't get a job, you ain't shit. Uh, uh, uh. Whatever these interviews that you go to, and, and because you may have dreadlocks, or you because you may be too black, or because you may not have the education that someone else sitting next to you have, that doesn't mean that you're not a great man. That doesn't mean that you're not a black man. Your pocket does not determine... Your character, your character is what determines who you are. So I want to say to every black man out there that has ever, ever, ever been lied to, it's time for you to realize it was a lie. You are great. You are so great. We love you. We appreciate you, black man. And I know it's hard sometimes because our women are out here and we've been toughened by life. We've had to be the head of the household for so long. We don't know how to let y'all be men again. But I'm telling you that there's women out here that are ready to let the black man be a black man again. It's time for you to take your place. Win, lose, or draw. We with you, black man, and we love you. Right. Boom! Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister, very much, man. Uh, thank you, Baba TV, man, for letting us uh, come on here today, man, and express ourselves. Uh, got something to say? Real quick to close out, I'm going to say, we got to remember, we have been miseducated, so we must be re-educated. Yeah. Okay, we must unlearn and relearn. Yeah. See, the dynamics that you talked about with the problems, and I'm closing out to say this, is a product, is a, is a, is a, being a product of con conditioning, being a product of being lied to. So, in the process of us waking up, there may even have to be separations from amongst us. Right. All right, there has to be internal separations, because right. we're not all the same no more. Right. We're going to still win, because we got a divine rendezvous with destiny, no that, live that, eat that, sleep that, breathe that, black power. I gotta say this, let me say it, Bob, before you cut it off. I've been wanting to say this forever. Baba TV every time fire! Peace.
please. I just want to say, um, we as a people, we all need re mentally. We all need to be mentally restored. Um, like even though I, someone planted a seed in me that woke up my consciousness, that doesn't mean that I'm all the way fixed. I don't act like I'm righteous all the time. Like I still need things done within me that I know I have to restore. And we all as a whole need to do these things. All right, uh, when a person is, is seeking to be better than what they were the day before, you cannot judge that person and say, oh, you think that you're this, you think that you're holier than thou. Because soon as it's like, it's like somebody trying to be vegan. You, you see them eat a chicken wing, you gonna curse them, shun them, and act like they supposed to be like instantly vegan. And that's not, it's a process. And we all need to think, we need to realize that it's gonna take time. It took all this time for us to be in this situation and now we gotta get ourselves up out of it. And each day, each step is getting you closer to being better. And that's, you know, that's what we got to start focusing on. Real restoration. Yes. Peace. Peace out.